welcome back to Fright Fest, the Suskas. Thank you for having us back, Paul. Oh, oh, we're so happy to be here. During Rabbit, this was like the light at the end of the tunnel. It's like we're going to have the world premiere at Fright Fest, the best audience in the world. Well, it feels a little like deja vu because like seven years ago, we made this very weird movie and nobody knew what to do with it. And, I, and we knew it was good, but it was very different. And, everyone and you knew it was good. You knew it was good. So you, I you, know. It was amazing. You, it was a Sunday morning that we played. And yeah. I remember the Saturday night. I didn't sleep at all. No, I was we just so stayed nervous. The hotel room, like, because it was when the theater was like 1,400. Season. It was the, mm -hmm. it was probably was the, the most. That was like, when the Empire was one big. Yes! One big and cinema. I never, you took me in there before and I was like, what? Oh, You're kidding me! Yeah. Who's movie? My movie? <laughs> I'd never been in a theater that big or been around that many people, let alone like to see my film. That was, it was so overwhelming and it was so magnificent because. It's not like other festivals. They're all horror fans, so they're laughing at all like the horror jokes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Very genre savvy cl uh, crowd. Why rabid? Well, why? We why <laughs> take the, the poison chalice of remaking an early Cronenberg? Because well, they wouldn't give us Dead Ringers yet. <laughs> okay, all right. Dead Ringers well, that's next, next. You know. <laughs> well, we got an email in the dead of winter, uh, one December, and it literally said, "Would you like to remake David Cronenberg's Rabbit?" And I looked at Jen. I was like. Oh my God, did you see this? And we're like, no way is this real. It was like a miracle. It was really, really early in the morning too and the sun was just coming up and I was like, this is a sign. And it had been after like, I mean, we haven't made another movie in years. Mm. We were game show hosts for years and after American Mary, no one really knew what to do with us. We they became were really so put off by our yes. original ideas. It was impossible to get an original thing made because they said they couldn't control us, which is a little bit true. So we got an interview the next day with these guys on Skype and they explained that they usually do religious movies mm -hmm. and now they did a religious horror movie mm. and then they bought the rights to rabid thinking it was about rabid dogs <laughs> until what? they presented the original script to David Cronenberg who let them know it was not and they asked him to be a producer and because of the script he didn't want to be a part of it wow. so they googled Cronenberg names popped up because he's one of our greatest influences and, and he tells they tell us this, this story is during the skype thing and at the first thing i'm like oh no you sent this to mr crow because i had read the script i was like oh wait it's a little well i said yes and i'm like i never say page one rewrite but i always say i'm going to change the beginning the ending i'm going to switch the genders i'm going to make the kills better and i'm going to tweak the dialogues mm. and they're like that's a page one rewrite I'm like, no one likes to hear that page right. one rewrite we actually rewrote it 20 million times. Wow. Yeah, so when ah. they asked us to explain what Cronenberg means, so imagine somebody who doesn't, it's it's very complicated and it's very sexual. Yeah. Jen said, thank God it's not David Lynch, otherwise I couldn't tell you what the movie's about. <laughs> <laughs> so we explained it to them and then they said, how about you guys handle the creative when we'll handle the money, which is the only way to tackle something. When she like started this. explaining what transhumanism was, their eyes just mm, glazed, glazed over. over and it was like, she's so confident. I think she knows what she's talking about, but I, I can't. Well, I, it's not to impress them. It's always to impress David because yeah. I mean our work is weird because he's a Canadian who had such weird things like mm. when I was a little girl I had to sneak shivers and I had to sneak trash because you know because you know if you because you, you know because you know and then it was when you're under 10 you have to sneak all the absolutely and then, until years later I didn't even realize it was the same director mm. but he has that effect on you that what was the first Cronenberg film that you saw the one that sticks in mind was the fly the fly. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was just, I, it's still, I think it has such an effect on me. I can't eat during the fly. I just, and it's so funny to think that's his most commercial film. Like that was his biggest, like, theatrical yeah, success. And if you said, <clears throat> If you put those kind of prosthetics in a film nowadays, oh my god. <laughs> well, Shivers was mine, and I'm excited to say that Lynn Lowry also makes an appearance in mm. Rabbit. We got a lot of his original, a lot of his cast, a lot of his crew. So when we were on set and we were like, what would David do? Or da this never happened to David. We'd have like Brian Day, his sound person, like be like, come over here. I'll tell you what David did when that actually happened to him. I was like, oh, no way. We wanted to do a remake like David would do a remake. We even adjusted our directing style to be like David. David is very quiet. Yes. So we had very something calm. called a library slash sanctuary set. As you know, we're not very quiet. No. But we were. We were it was, you move so fast and so quickly when everybody's quiet. And it just creates this peaceful energy, especially when the things that you're doing are not peaceful. And how often is a film set peaceful? Tell us about casting the lead because oh, yeah. that must have been the most tricky uh, casting aspect of this particular movie because it's yes. a, she's brilliant in yes. it as well, isn't Thank she? Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. It was very serendipitous because originally I wanted Sarah Gadden because I was like, who would David pick? That's obviously who we'd go for. And Laura uh, actually had a different project she brought us in for a meeting for, and it was outside on a patio. And you know how when it's summer, ants fly out of their their nest. Mm. Yeah. 
she started getting attacked by this swarm of ants. It's a very mini version of the birds. But she was pitching me, and she was so funny, and she was so tenacious. She, I had, I just had the script for Rap, and I was like, Laura, um, I know, I know, we're talking about something totally different, but do you like David Cronenberg? She's like, yeah. And she's, I was like, would you consider being a rabid remake? And she's like, is that the one with Marilyn Chambers? And I'm like, no, no, but you would play the friend. And then she read the script and she's like, no, I want to play Rose. And I was like, oh, you want to play Rose? So pulled it off her right away, gave it to her. And I love it because David originally wanted Sissy Spacek, but they ended up with Marilyn Chambers, both Ooh. about their own skill set. But I believe that uh, uh, Laura is like this beautiful blend between the two of them. Yeah. And she watched so much of Marilyn's performance. There's moments as where I feel her face even like blends to look exactly like her. Was, she was so cool on set oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. And she's such a team player. And she didn't, like, she was so tired of just being the pretty girl. Yes. Because yep. when you're so beautiful, I mean, she's effortlessly gorgeous. Yeah. She's in TV as well. She's yeah, done a lot of TV work. Yeah, she's done She was Supergirl on the CW for she's, ages in Smallville. She's on V World. Yeah. Where's coming up with Dr. Burroughs again. Yeah, Ted Atherton's yeah, on that. Yeah, they're still going at it. They just it. stole our vampires for they're, their I, They took our whole cast and crew, actually. Yeah. Ian Summer Holden. But she was so, like, when I was designing uh, with Masters Effects, who came back from American Mary, of course, they did all of her body horror mm. and Steve Kasatansky of uh, Astron, Six. Astron Six, yes. Now it's and retired. The Void, yeah, now retired. He was our lead creature designer. So when I was trying to design uh, the facial piece for Laura, you know, you always have to kind of breach them like, oh, okay, so how extreme are you willing to go? And she said, make me as extreme as you want. I don't care about being pretty. I want to start down because also I had to make Laura look a little less beautiful at the beginning of the film because you just look at her and she's the kind of girl yeah, you stunning. look at. Car Real accident. beautiful, yeah. Just gorgeous. She and actually came from a Cronenberg lab. They didn't want to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> and like Katie, because I saw her in television, she's this amazing Canadian yeah. actress. I felt that she didn't really get the opportunity to perform as talented as she yeah. is. Mm. And I know some people have seen her and they're like, I saw her in Supergirl, but I never thought she could do this. I'm like, she never got the opportunity yeah, until she now. Could, she I could think do we'll, anything. Oh yeah, we'll never be able to get her again. She's just gonna go be a Supergirl in the movie. She's probably gonna go be Catwoman now. Be like, Laura, can you get me tickets? She has such a Michelle Pfeiffer, Sharon Stone vibe. Yeah, she'd be such a good Catwoman. And she's producing now. She actually produced a bit on this movie too. She got Greg, Greg Brick on. She Whoa. has a new movie coming out. Like she's she's on fire right now. What, what are you working on at the moment? Well, we're very lucky that after Martin Katz, uh, who is David's uh, producer, yes. he's from Prospero Pictures and his partner. Karen Wilkie, they saw the first version of Rabbit. As soon as it was finished, they saw a very, very small screening, and they signed on exclusively to be our new producers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, it's a dream come true. We're uh, trying to get uh, the rights to doing a Dead Ringers television series because we've always wanted to do a gender swap with proctologists and, of course, cast the Olsen twins. Yes, and Olsen's, if you're watching this, I mean... I think that with with Full House, you didn't really have any control over no. your career at that point, and everybody has like their outside kind of depiction of what identical twins are like. Show up, just do me a season or one, or you just see how you feel about it. But just show them how badass you are as actors, and then go back to being billionaires. Who cares? But you know, have win a bunch of beautiful like fancy actress awards too. We would be the fallbacks. Yes. Yeah, we're the fallbacks, <laughs> and it's too gross and weird. But it, I mean, and we have an original film that it looks like will be hopefully starting in the spring. Yes. Ooh. And it's after American Mary. Like I said, I feel like been in filmmaker prison where I had like this really incredible idea that was well before Me Too. It's funny that the Me Too movement never mentions American Mary. They don't want people so ending up in storage lockers because that's a gray area. That's a very motivational <laughs> So tale. the next film, is that going to be genre or not? It's going to be horror. It's going to be Bob, our monster movie that oh. we mentioned ages ago. It's a psychological thriller that's, wow. It's almost like who uh, it's a bit like Harvey, but it was a joke on the Weinsteins back in the day, so his name is Bob. Okay. And uh, it's a little like Who Framed Roger Rabbit because we have a character that is in, in actuality there in some moments. So we have a lot of practical effects, but we also have a blend from some of the top guys that are going to be building a VFX veil over the entire creature. So it's going to look as realistic as you've That's ever fantastic. seen a monster. Yeah. And finally, is there anything you want to say to the fans and to Fright Fest generally direct? Uh, Thank you, Fright Fest. Uh, for seven years, we've been dreaming of coming back. Uh, we almost came back with Sino Evil, too. But Sorry about that. Uh, almost, Sorry very much. Uh, this is our most personal film since American Mary, which you guys gave us such a gracious welcome for. And to be returning with Rabbit is a dream come true. I don't feel nervous because I feel like I'm about to sit in or I just sat in a theater full of my friends. 
I, that are drunk and disorderly. A little bit. <laughs> just a touch. Just a touch. It's a final night. I feel nervous because it's the exact same situation I was in with American Mary seven years ago. I'm making a Larry Wade movie that nobody knows if it hit the mark. So it's a fright fest for people who really know horror. So guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And please let us know what you think of the film if we don't get to hug you tonight, which is very unlikely. Yeah. Please reach out on social media. We'll be there. It's us managing all of that. So please reach out. Let us know what yeah, you think of the film. Yeah, come and say hi.